Hey folks, this is Clint with Miller 360 and just got me a new iMac, MacBook Air actually. And um, just wanted to do a tutorial. There were several um, videos out there and I, I particularly like the Zoom interface, um, which is the interface that I had up on the screen. One reason I went with this is because you can record eight simultaneous tracks with this recorder it also works as a nice interface and um, so I'm kinda new back to the Mac world I'd used it a little bit before in the past um, but not very extensively so I'm a novice just like you and just kinda wanted to walk you through the steps uh, on what I've done um, Right now I'm using for my webcam also a Zoom Q2N. Seems to work pretty good. And I'm just a guy with a normal job and basically, uh, you know, like to record and do music on the side. I'm going to actually grab this webcam and, and kind of show some things that I have connected here uh, that might help you in in your process and yes couple things I'm from Missouri love the Chiefs I can't see I'm trying to figure this whole webcam thing out and uh, hoping they go to the Super Bowl here in 2019 so anyway don't throw uh, rotten tomatoes at me so my home studio is pretty simple um, I don't have a lot of money invested in it but I do have some again the Q2N I'll pick it up here one of my first purchase here was you know obviously my Mac and then I have a 32 inch uh, Vizio here right above the Mac on a shelf nothing fancy we got some M1 audio uh, studio monitors kind of panning across there oh there's my two cowboy hats I never wear and then uh, as you can see here the zoom R. 16 which is the recorder that I have up on the screen and then I use my condenser mic here and so that's just a little bit about what I got going on here I'll put the cam back up so the first thing you want to do um, oh there's one other piece I wanted to show you uh, the, the uh, MacBook Air comes with two Thunderbolt connections which are really cool in a rock solid connection. I don't know all the ins and outs, but I know it is a, one of the fastest connections out. Uh, but I wanted to use my existing interface if you want to dive into higher end uh, Thunderbolt uh, interfaces, those are available. But I just bought this uh, as about a $50 to $70 product by Charge In, I think, off of Amazon. A uh, pretty simple little connector here where you can connect USB and your HDMI to this one Thunderbolt connection. And then the other plug-in I've got there is just my power cord for my MacBook Air. So, pretty simple stuff. You want to go out here first to the Zoom website, which is zoom-na.com. And then you'll go over to the... Uh, supports and downloads section and once you get into here you'll you'll see all the zoom products here's that cool fancy dancy thunderbolt product that they have that uh, is supposed to be zero latency but anyway uh, i didn't have an extra four hundred dollars laying around to buy that and i've got a four hundred dollar interface that seems to meet a lot of different purposes and so here's my recorder as I click on that, you'll notice that you can download a number of different things about the control interface and ultimately get down and download your software and drivers. And in my case, I have a Mac, so I downloaded that. If you had a PC, 32 or 64 bit, most PCs are now, you would download the 64 bit piece. So that's, that's pretty much it. I wanted this to uh, just do some home recordings. I've always liked to write music, so uh, I wanted GarageBand. It's easy. It's also on the iPhone, so you can kind of goof around with it there. And I wanted iMovie, and I'm recording this in QuickTime. Uh, QuickTime doesn't 
seem to record stereo audio, but that might just be my uh, lack of knowledge or ignorance on that part. So uh, anyway, once I got this downloaded and drivers seem to work, drivers are always kind of finicky because if they stop working, I mean, typically the easiest way that you know, just dumb luck, I unplug the interface, uh, USB cord, and then cycle power on it and plug it back in. That typically starts working again. Uh, more Chiefs. So anyway, everything's plugged into that charge in USB hub into my Mac. <clears throat> and then since uh, I get this going, basically... Uh, I've got it plugged in, and then I can uh, get GarageBand going um, or a number of other things. And so a um, couple things. Once you get it installed, uh, you'll see some documentation from the website. Uh, back to the website where they talk to you a little bit about the product how to hook it up, and you can pick the sample rates that best fit your particular application and computer. Uh, so far it's been uh, a pretty good product for me. I do like the field recording aspect of the R16 because I, if I wanted to record you know, a drummer, a bass player, a singer, and a guitar player in a music setting, I could do that. And then I could go out to GarageBand and connect um, the devices and import those audio files as well. So um, I'm going to do some follow-up videos on this and get in here in a little bit on kind of first recording with the R16 in GarageBand. And you'll want to follow specifically the steps they have about installing the driver or you're going to want to close all the programs on the Mac. Uh, if you've got any questions about how to close programs on the Mac, there's other YouTube videos out there from other people that will show you how to do that, or a number of things. But I uh, wanted to let you know that definitely you're going to want to do that. Um, and then after you get that all up and going, minimize this. All right, folks, we're live here, and we got GarageBand open. We've got the Zoom uh, R16 hooked up to it, and right when you get in GarageBand here, it's going to ask you what kind of instrument you want to record, and we're just going to do something real simple like a vocal. Uh, we also, from our Zoom interface, we're going to want to make sure we're on input 6, but let me back up just a second. When you get into GarageBand, one of the first things you're going to want to do is pick Preferences and then make sure your output and input are on that Zoom R16 so you can use your nice condenser mic or whatever mic you've picked plus a good audio interface. You're going to do that from the Audio MIDI box here and you just pick that. And I've got Enable Audio Units if you want to know more about that. We're not going to dig into that this video, but you can always jump over here to help for more information. But uh, today, for this purpose, we're just showing you how to do a very, very basic first recording so you can do a podcast or something like this uh, moving forward. So first set your output and input devices up, and we've got that going. And then we're going to pick this. We're going to make sure we're on input 6. That just happens to be the input that we have plugged into on our Zoom R16 to get the phantom power out of the microphone because tracks uh, or inputs 5 and 6 both have phantom power. At that point, we hit create. And then you can see that I'm getting audio signal here we want to look down here in the track setting and how you get to that is you just click on these buttons up here and pick your input make sure it's on the right input and um, you don't have to worry about recording level it's grayed out of course you have a recording level on your zoom r16 so once you get in here 
you don't really need to see all this stuff so we're going to close it down and then we're going to scroll back to the beginning of the recording if you're not already there uh, and then you hit record and you should be off to the races recording your voice and you can see this coming through and recording me right now as I'm talking so when we're done we just hit stop and that's how you do a basic recording in GarageBand using the Zoom R16 as your interface. Hope this helped. Have a great day.